So I think the biggest thing with Gen Z versus millennials is that Gen Z grew up mobile first and millennials grew up internet first for the most part. And so that's kind of a big paradigm shift when you think about how Gen Z treats tech products and apps and ads and marketing where they have such a high BS meter when they're scrolling through social media that your content better catch their eye in 0.01 seconds. You gotta pick yourself up, go backwards, and slam yourself at the wall like 500 more times until the wall crumbles. 25% of middle school girls already believe they'll never achieve their dream career. Dream career. Dream career. Hi, I'm Kara Golden, founder and CEO of Hint. Hint. And you're Hint. listening to Unstoppable, a podcast spotlighting the journeys of inspiring entrepreneurs. I believe that at its core, leadership is about constantly learning from the people around you. And I'm so inspired by the conversations we're having in our upcoming episodes and can't wait to share them with you. This season, some of my guests include Andrew Dudham, founder of Hims, Erica Nardini, CEO of Barstool Sports, Daniel Dubois and Whitney Tingle, co-founders of Sakara Life, and much, much more. Plus, we asked the million dollar question, what does it really take to be unstoppable? Stoppable. Let's find out. Hi, everybody. It's Kara Golden from Unstoppable. We're so excited to have Tiffany Zong here today with Zebra IQ. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Kara. How are you? Excited to be here. Yeah, super excited. Tiffany's a friend of mine, and so it's super excited. I haven't seen her in a little while and excited to have her in here to just talk a little bit about what she sees in the whole Gen Z generation and and just overall with Zebra IQ. So anyway, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So a little bit of info on Tiffany in case you are not aware of who Tiffany is, and you must be hiding under a rock if if uh, you don't know who she is, but Forbes 30 under 30, marketing and advertising, woohoo, Vanity Fair's future innovators, love that, and Adweek Young Influentials, Forbes 10 Gen Z experts, I love that, and Wall Street Journal's youngest VC, wow. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. I love Back it. Back in the day. It. Back in the day. Very, <laughs> very cool. So Tiffany Zong is the Gen Z decoder. She's in her early 20s and uh, 23. Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. 23 years old. Recently turned 23. Woohoo. Not how under was, 20 How was your anymore. birthday? It's good. I celebrated it with uh, close friends, so... It's good. It's great. Yeah. Lives here in San Francisco and is one of the most sought after young trends and marketing experts. As the founder and CEO of Zebra IQ, she's worked with Snapchat, Levi Strauss, Turner Broadcasting. Did you know I used to work there? Really? Ages ago. Ages ago. Uh, and Google and other major companies to help them reach the youth and stay relevant. So her mission is to help brands better understand the Gen Z offering overall and just how to to basically get them real-time feedback on the Gen Z consumers. Um, so we're going to dive a little bit into more of, of some of Tiffany's background, but again, welcome. So tell me a little bit about Tiffany. Like, how did you get to this point? And at the uh, old age of 23, being sort of where you are today. I think it's so awesome. It's great. Yeah. So I grew up in Silicon Valley, was lucky enough to grow up here and be exposed to kind of all the startups and technology in the area. Uh, my parents are also entrepreneurs, have been building kind of companies low key just their whole life. And I was inspired by that. Since a young age, I've always wanted to invent things. When I was a kid, I wanted to build robots, things like that. As the years progressed, I realized that it'd be a lot easier to build things on the internet. So I switched more to that. And then when I was in high school, I started using Twitter, which really led me to meeting a lot of really smart people in tech, from founders to investors to operators to folks all over. I realized that I was able to meet anyone just through Twitter, and it was the craziest realization ever. Was that um, your first social platform then? That was my first main, I guess, like business-related, networking-related social platform. I had Instagram and Snapchat, but I wasn't using that to like meet people. But on Twitter, I was just asking very prominent VCs and founders just questions. 
And if they replied, I would follow up. And I love it. I would just follow up like every few days with new questions. I was just curious and I had nothing to lose. That was probably the biggest thing when I was like 16, 15 or 16 and starting to use Twitter. I had nothing to lose. No one knew who I was. I was like, if something bad happens, I can just change my name. But you never did that. I never did that. (laughs) Uh, Somehow it has uh, escalated into me working at Product Hunt in 2015, early 2015, and then joining a $300 million VC firm focused on early stage consumer tech where I met the founders. They really liked how I thought about just consumer products, consumer apps, and how they related to this next generation. Thought it would just be really helpful on the investment side as well as on the portfolio company side where I could be helpful to the founders by bringing in this new perspective as opposed to most VCs being millennials or boomers. So, yeah. There's lots of things that I want to ask you, but I think in addition to sort of where I think you've really captured the market in terms of being able to educate like these great companies about the Gen Z, what do you think? you had in you like as a you know a kid to be able to just go out and like go on twitter and just like i mean you just like you're fearless like right i feel like you just didn't have the walls that i see and so many people young and old that you know just allow you to just go out and just like you know do it yeah and and what do you think like like what would you say to you know somebody who is trying to figure out how to like, you know, figure out their career or, you know, and in in such a young age, like what, how do you you just get going? I mean, what do you, what do you do? I think the biggest like quote that I think about a lot is you miss all the shots you don't take. Mm -hmm. So why not? It's like, you have nothing to lose. And if you think about that for every single decision that you might be scared of making or just like taking the leap, like, you have nothing to lose so, for the most part. So key. I love for it. For the most part, like 99% of the time. There's probably 1% of the time where you might have something to lose, but you just got to do the analysis on that part. So that was me. That was 100% me. When yeah. I was, I I did, I was, they didn't have Twitter when I was uh, getting started. But for me, it was, I, I left, I grew up in Arizona and I moved to New York and I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And I just like literally landed there. I didn't really even know what a subway was other than the fact that like my I had seen it in movies, but I didn't really know how to get on one or that I didn't really focus on the fact that they were actually underground and that you had to like go through a turnstile and buy a coin and like I I just didn't understand how that whole thing worked. Growing kind of up without the internet seems No, it's crazy. So it's so hard. It's insane. I mean, I could tell you millions of stories, but I won't bore everybody about it, but dial up and fighting with your siblings about, you know, making sure that they weren't on the phone while you were on the computer because you get disconnected. Can yeah. you imagine in chat room? Like you're trying to have a full on conversation and then all of a sudden you get disconnected because your, you know, asshole brother has decided that he's just gonna get on the telephone. So. And now you can just spam text your friends yeah. anytime you want. Anytime you want. You're literally just like taking their attention. Yeah. <laughs> and time. Yeah. No, totally. It's it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But I see a lot of what you've done and and what you're gonna be doing and sort of me as as uh when I was getting started. Wow. So I'm writing a book Monarch. actually. I don't know if I told you this, but I'm writing a book and it'll be out in October with Harper Collins and it's called Undaunted. Wow. And there's a lot of stories, you know, about my views on sort of, you know, just going out and doing it and taking yeah. your shots and like you have nothing to lose. Exactly. And, I'm know. excited to read it. Yeah. So it'll it'll be super fun. So so you went out, you just emailed everybody and I didn't like, even or, know how to do email. I yeah. didn't know how to do cold emails. That's awesome. Still am not that great at cold emails. Yeah. And yeah. so it was just like messaging tweets yeah. and people would post something on Twitter. I would just reply being like, why do you think this way? But I would do it in a really like non-aggressive or confrontational way as opposed to like most people on Twitter where they're trying to troll you or troll these like famous people or trying to put them down. Like I was just curious. And so it's just bringing that kind of mood kind of to the table as well is just different than how I saw a lot of people using Twitter. But I I think at the end of the day, it's just thinking about mindset shifts. And that's like one of them. Mm -hmm. There's, I think like more people would benefit from doing these kind of thought exercises around mindset shifts and what different types of mindsets they should adopt each year. 
I love it. And so were you, did you take engineering classes or what, what was sort of your passion like in, in high school? I, mean, I was, was terrible at school. Yeah. It was like, like if, like I put so much effort into school into like being a decent student, but if I just didn't put all the hard work in, I was just, I was just like a terrible natural student. I, I just did not like school. I didn't like homework. I didn't like tests. And so in my free time, I was just figuring out ways to like build businesses on the internet. That's amazing. And I started an online magazine when I was 16, just focusing on music, like new artists, new technology, and new fashion trends. And that was really a way for me to just experiment with different ideas and have a media platform to do so and also get just backstage access to a lot of these events and launches that you couldn't get otherwise if you didn't have a so-called media brand yeah i love it so i use that to just finesse so many uh backstage passes to things and free products all sorts of stuff but it was fun times and have fun yeah like the chain smokers where we discovered them early in the early days yeah. Yeah. um they were like emailing us with these just telling us to share their songs before they blew up from a uh, selfie i love it so i love it so yeah. being able to do all of that so talk to us about gen z trends today and and what do you see happening overall so i think the biggest thing with gen z versus millennials is that gen z grew up mobile first mm-hmm. and millennials grew up internet first for the most part and so that's kind of a big paradigm shift when you think about how Gen Z treats tech products and apps and ads and marketing, where they have such a high BS meter when they're scrolling through social media that your content better catch their eye in 0.01 seconds um, if you're trying to appeal to them. And you see in, on Instagram, just everyone is selling some sort of thing these days. There's ads sure. everywhere. How do you build an organic relationship with your customers and how do you build an actual community as opposed to a one one way customer sales type of relationship so that's kind of a big thing we're seeing around uh gen z and also just different ways of consuming content it's just we're able to consume content so much faster because it's uh just more intuitive for us and we also skip a lot of bad content once we see it um So just consuming so much content every day. Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, like everything. Yeah, it's really, really true. What do you think is is an app that's sort of challenging some of the other apps in the way that that maybe changes behaviors of of Gen Z and expectations of Gen Z? Do you see one out there that is that is really shifting? The obvious one is TikTok, Mm -hmm. where TikTok has built a platform where people can actually be their true selves and put themselves out there without having any sort of barrier or perception that they're trying to show. It you can you have a higher chance of going viral if you act more like your weird self mm-hmm. than acting like a polished self, which is very different than Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and even YouTube. But we're now beginning to see a shift in Gen Z where Gen Z is now more open to being themselves because of TikTok. And that's translating to YouTube as well, where vloggers are being themselves. A big example is Emma Chamberlain, Mm -hmm. who has very raw footage and her vlogs get millions of views every day. But it's just her being herself and people see her as a friend as opposed to an influencer who is out of reach or a celebrity. And she doesn't like being called an influencer either. She likes being, being perceived as a friend and an entertainer. And I love that. It's so Gen Z to think like that. Where yeah. We're making TikTok videos because we want to entertain other people and our friends. Yeah. And I, I just really like that shift as opposed to a more, a more per, performance-based kind of online branding. So what do you think about sort of the information society and, and you know, data just as a whole? Do you, you know, I've heard people talk about, you know, TikTok in particular as you know tracking exactly what is going on in different societies where they're happening exactly you know it's uh i don't think it's any big secret that you know the company is owned by the chinese government so did you know that so yeah a big i mean chunk their of claims it. are that they will not share any sort of 
info to the Chinese government. I don't have details around that. Yeah. But when we think about like data and privacy, like that is obviously really scary. But then again, we are all using Google products mm-hmm. and our whole life is consumed by Google and Amazon mm-hmm. primarily. And they have all the personalization data around us. What we say with Amazon Alexa now, it's what we're saying in our fam- in our house, and they're tracking all of that. Yeah. And so people are freaking out about like privacy and data, but they don't realize it's already in their own home. Yeah. It's already happening in America, so it's less of a. I think it's less of a country division between like China versus America. I just think it's more so these major companies and how they're thinking about. Privacy, how they're thinking about putting that data back into the consumer's hands and giving consumers the flexibility to own and share specific sorts of data that they want to share. Yeah. No, I think there's, I think it's companies, I think it's countries, I think that we're seeing, you know, who owns you know, this data. And I, I think it's, uh, I think it's a really interesting topic. I think there's legal issues too, when yeah. you look at like the, you know, number of minorities, um, and, you know, Gen Z's that are, that are actually on TikTok too, that it's like, what are we actually trying to, you know, are we actually segmenting and trying to look at different cultural behaviors? Yeah. Um, you know, whether or not all of that is legal, as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a really, really interesting topic. And, you know, even, you know, I saw my kids are teenagers, and they're on TikTok. And, you know, I, like the fact that they're signing off uh, their rights, and they're not 18. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's like, there's a lot of people that w- would say like, that's, you know, not valid. And so, yeah. you know, what what it ultimately is going to happen, it'll be very, very interesting. So yeah, there was a joke I saw on Twitter recently that Instagram and Snapchat are using AR filters so that they can get our facial data, which would be wild. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm but not. I'm not surprised. It's 2020, so who yeah. knows? Anything no. is possible. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. And but I do think it would be. I don't know. I I, I want to get a lawyer on here at some point just to come in and talk about some of these issues because I think it's really, really fascinating. And I think that I do think that TikTok has sort of changed the game for Instagram. And, you know, as these as these apps start to get more dependent on ads, uh, yeah. I think it's but it's good to hear that you think that it's, you know, transitioning over to YouTube, though, in terms of, you know, where other people, it's not just TikTok. Like, YouTube I think, will always be a thing. I know. I think so, too. I think but I like it. TikTok, another thing that's scary about all these kids posting on TikTok is, like, they're just exposing their home and where they live and everything about their life. Yeah. And that's so dangerous. Yeah. It's like, there are crazy people out there. Yeah. No, no, no. I think you're, I think you're 100% right. And I think that whether or not you know, kids are really realizing it, you know, they just, they don't They're care. They don't think don't about it. That. No, think about that. no, no, no. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's a little bit scary. So, okay. So going on to, uh, we were talking a little bit about, um, when I first met you, you had like two people in your company. Now you're up to 10, which is like awesome. Yeah. Right. And it's so great. I love hearing when entrepreneurs are growing and, you know, doing great things. What are you working on right now? What do you what's the most exciting stuff that you're working on? So we're a fully remote team, which is really interesting and has given us the ability to kind of ship products very quickly uh, and seamlessly just across all the different time zones. And what we're focused on right now is recently launched a new version of our mobile app, which lets Gen Zs and millennials answer questions and surveys to and can earn rewards, money, Bitcoin, etc. through answering surveys. So basically get paid to share your opinion uh, and share your feedback on specific brands and, and products. We're also helping brands build branded communities where they can ha- have invite their top fans and send them surveys, send them free products, get their feedback, whether it's physical products or digital products. We're working with a lot of retail and CPG companies um, that are just major players in the, in the game. And it's been interesting kind of seeing how there's been a big shift in brands actually caring about communities. Um, so that's what we're building a lot of our tooling for. And we're going to 
launch a self-service platform where anyone will be able to go in and ask questions to any sort of Gen Z group whenever they want, which That's awesome. is game changing. Like it just doesn't exist today. And it's what I set out to build two years ago when I started this company. And I'm super excited to so launch whether, that. So if you're looking to get into the Gen Z market, do you think that this is critical, you know, to be able to really get into, you know, you've got a community. Do you think it's working with your existing Gen Z community or do you think you can actually you can actually find the Gen Z community by going in and asking questions? So both our panel is just growing kind of exponentially. Our community of Gen Zs is growing exponentially. Um, and we're able to help brands, companies recruit new communities, new panel members if they want it, or they can use our existing community. I love it. Um, through mobile. Through mobile. Primarily. Only mobile. Yeah. But every every startup, every company that cares about surviving for in the next like five, 10 years should start thinking about Gen Z. Whether you're a startup with two people, one person, or you're a Fortune 500 company, Fortune 100 company that are still stuck in the millennial days. Yeah. So you've said that brands should turn their email lists and social media followers and website visitors, visitors into their own you know, research panel. What do you think is, like, I love that idea. What do you think is like the key thing? Like you've got, you know, you've got this email, you've got whatever, a thousand names, yeah. like wh- where do you think, how do you do that? Like ultimately, I mean. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the product that we're building out, which lets brands be able to import kind of their customers, their users, uh, and engage with them with live chat, video chat. Um, you can schedule video interviews with specific people in your panel or outside of your panel and in our overall Zebra community as well to just get feedback really quickly. And I think a lot of companies need to need to start spending more time around their community managers and realizing that community managers are super important. You do a great job around building community and actually caring about community managers, but we see a lot of brands that just think of it as a thing they should do on the side. And it's so crucial, I think, like your brand and your community is how you're going to build a moat. It's less so kind of anything else, but it's really just how you're building that relationship with your target target customers. And that you're listening. Yeah. And that you're I, listening. I think that what I've seen too that I think you definitely understand is that it's not just about answering questions. It's also about engagement and actually having a conversation. And while you're listening, also, you know, having a dialogue. Right. Like and I think that a dialogue for brands can ultimately turn into a revenue stream. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of trust that gets built if you are actually having a back and forth conversation instead of saying yeah. yes, no. You and know. trust leads to loyalty. And trust leads to loyalty. Which is the hardest thing for brands around reaching Gen Z right now, where loyalty can disappear or not even appear in a split second where there's so many options for every single product or vertical that Gen Z wants to buy, whether it's mattresses, whether it's anything, really. Yeah, more than anything. What do you think is the is the Gen Z brand, a couple of them, you know, today that you think are like the definitely Gen Z? Snapchat obviously crushes it on, on Gen Z. Um, what about like consumer products? Consumer products. Like, Nike is really good. Mm-hmm. Nike and Adidas really, really understand. Um, are there any homegrown like Gen Z brands that you see out there that are? I feel like there's makeup brands that are like Glossier. Like, yeah, I think that Glossier is a great example because they emphasize on building their community from day one. Or like brands like North Face, Patagonia, very. Very Gen Z as well. Yeah. What do you think are the key things? Like you mentioned Patagonia. I mean, do you think that Gen Z is, do you think they care a lot about sustainability and, or do you think that, you know, that's less of a concern than, uh, than for a millennial, for example? I think it's, I think Gen Z cares more about that than a millennial. Mm -hmm. I think because of all the options out there, 
they are going to want to choose the brands that are more sustainable than the ones that are not. And it just shows that a lot of the new direct-to-consumer brands can move faster and brand themselves around that Mm -hmm. versus traditional old stodgy brands that have a hard time shifting their supply chain and shifting kind of their whole branding, marketing, their product, everything around that. So we've just seen so many new direct-to-consumer startups that are focused on on that. I feel like they're they're all active. They're not brands that are just kind of boring and sit yeah. still. Like they're brands that are very, you know, active in some way, shape, or form. How do you recruit these people for Gen Zs, you know, coming into the workforce? What do you think are some of the key things that are really like differentiate them from maybe a millennial? Really caring about their personal growth and personal development mm-hmm. is an uh, important thing no matter how large your company is, it doesn't give you kind of an excuse to just treat the Gen Z as an intern or treat them with just boring tasks that they don't even want to do. It's taking the time to understand them and realizing that they have goals as well and how you can help them achieve that, how you can realize that Gen Z wants to have like freedom and autonomy in the workplace workplace they want to be in charge of projects and given kind of the independence to do that so really just trusting that this generation can do what they they say they can do is a big thing especially with the fact that you can practically search up anything on mm-hmm. google these days yeah i think like, it's true you can just trust them it's doing their job right and saying. you've literally done that with so many young people you've brought on yeah no i i think that's clear here we we're not perfect by any stretch but i think we try we try but somebody was saying to me the other day that your gen z generation has grown up with you know at least in school with being very project based so a lot of the educational system shifted from you know you go and work on these projects whether it's history or math or whatever and you know unfortunately grades have still you know, remained like, you know, you got to achieve, you got to get high grades, you know, there, all these people have, have really been focused on how do I overachieve and do these projects and do these projects. And by the time they actually get into the workforce, they're like, okay, I want to do something that I really love that I'm really passionate about, versus like, there are so many millennials, I think, that jumped into the workforce saying, that's the next step that I have to do. Mm-hmm. I get out of school and then I have to go find a job because I have to make money. And then a lot of them are actually waking up and realizing, maybe I should actually do something that I really want to do yeah. and really like. But Gen Z is coming into the workforce saying, you know, I want to go do project work. It doesn't have to be, I don't have to go into a company that is like, I'm going to be there forever. I'm going to go in and really like go in and see what it's all about. Am I going to learn? Am I going to grow? But they have to really like it. Like they have to like the project. Yeah. It's cool that there's so many Gen Zs that realize that they they can carve their own path Mm -hmm. because of so many examples that are existing now that are always in the news. When you see all of these younger entrepreneurs that are able to build something from scratch and turn that into a success, it's just inspirational and shows that anyone can do it. Um, and I love kind of those stories to, that prove that anyone can do basically anything. I love it. Yeah. And so it's just really believing in yourself and surrounding yourself with the right people, in yeah. my opinion. And That's awesome. Yeah. And your parents are entrepreneurs. My parents are entrepreneurs. I think a big thing they instilled into me that we talked about at the start of this was that They really just believed in me and all the different things that I wanted to do and explore. Like I've gone from, uh, I used to play tennis uh, competitively and I tried a bunch of different sports before that when I was in elementary school. I've also, like when I was a kid, I was also playing chess competitively and what else? Middle school, like the clarinet did like competitions for that too. I love it. Like, all these different things helped me figure out what I wanted to do. and my, All part of the journey. Yeah, my parents just, like, let me explore, yeah. as opposed to trying to drive me down a specific path that they believed would lead me to the success that they thought. I think that's a really important aspect. I mean, it's a, it's a 
even though you're not a parent yet, I think it's a parenting aspect that everybody should listen to because I, I think supporting, you know, your, your kids interests and, and helping them to actually figure it out is what the journey is all about. It's what education is all about. It's what sports is all about. Like it's just go try, right. And keep moving and keep doing things. And, and then you get to be as, as proud as I am of, Tiffany. So, right. Like, I mean, you've just, you've done an amazing, amazing job. So, so uh, I always ask this of my guests. So what makes you unstoppable? Um, that I am blindly optimistic about myself, my future, everything that I work on. I think that's a big one. And also just work ethic. I love it. Yeah. What were your what were yours it. gonna be? So well I just I think you're I think you're optimistic, but I think you just I don't know, I think that there's something very refreshing in, you know, seeing you and talking to you because you just kind of you just kind of do. I mean, there's a lot of people who just don't show up, right? Like I think with you, I've just seen you really hustle like over the you know, short time that I've known you where you just like, I mean, I remember you came and helped us out at our Outside Lands event, right? And, you know, just showing up there a little bit and, you know, and just saying like, hey, I'm here, you know, just want to support you guys. Like, I just think like, that's just a really important aspect where you're just willing to just kind of learn and do things along the way, but you're just also just willing to, you know, try things, right? Like I think just that the concept of trying and, and, you know, if it doesn't work, then you, you know, go down the next lane, pivot, whatever you want to call it. Like, I think that that's like a, that's a really, really important skill that I think not, I don't think we pay enough attention to, and we don't celebrate it enough in people. Like, I think it's, we have a certain set of people and maybe it's the way that we teach kids today, I've, I've often thought about this is like, you know, you've got to go and do this project, as we were talking about a minute ago. And if you like the, the whole concept of failure oh, yeah. is like way too, you Harsh. know, yeah, like you failed, you've got like, if you get a C on something like that's considered failure in most people's mind. And like that just, you know, that every t- kid learns differently too. totally which schools don't take into account. Yeah. And I think for you, it's just, you know, some experiences are better than other experiences. And, you know, but I I also just think that, you know, the fact that even you're focusing on, you know, Gen Z is also, you know, you want to learn. Like, I don't think you've ever shut off your learning, right? Like, you're curious about everything. You're curious, right? And I think that that is, I always talk about like curiosity is probably the biggest aspect that I, you know, look for and, and, you know, not only other entrepreneurs, but also employees. Like yeah. I think anybody can switch industries and, you know, go and work in the water business, even if they've been in tech, as long as you're curious, right? And yeah. you're, and you want to, you know, do new things and, and learn new things. I think that's really important. So that would be, you know, what makes you unstoppable? Because I think it's it's also, you know, looking at what other people don't do when I think about unstoppable and I sort of ask the question why they don't. And I think like, that's a, that's a gem that you should like hold on your shoulder as like, yeah, I most people are just too scared for whatever potential negative consequences that they've just made up in their mind. Yeah. That are not real. Yeah. I think that's totally true. And, and it's, it's something that, you know, I, I often think about like, how do we break that in people? Because I don't think they intend to sort of like grow up and be that way, but they end up getting fixed that way. And so trying all- new experiences constantly probably helps you break that barrier down a little. Very, little very by little. Yep. Very, very. So where can people find you? Where can people find uh, just Zebra IQ and, and learn more about yeah. everything? So. I'm at T Zong, T Z H O N G G, on most platforms Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Is Twitter's still your favorite? Twitter's still my favorite. Mine, mine too. Um, yeah. We just started theirs. How I met most of my friends, actually. Yeah, I love it. Just, 
insane. I, I love it. It's my favorite thing. And then uh, Zebra, Zebra IQ. I, so at come, Zebra IQ okay. everywhere. ZebraIQ.com for more info. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. This has been really fun. Thank you for having me. That's great. Yeah, thanks. If you like what you heard, please help spread the word and leave us a review. You can also follow along with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Kara Golden. Do you have a question for me or want to nominate an innovator to Spotlight? Please talk to me at Kara Golden on Twitter. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, be unstoppable. Unstoppable. unstoppable.